Um, my name is Councillor Karen McGowan. I'm chair of this lo uh, South East <coughs> Local Area Committee and I'm also a Burley Ward councillor. Uh, before I ask the other councillors to introduce themselves, I'll hand over to Sarah Hyde, Democratic Services, to read out the housekeeping arrangements. Okay, thank you, Chair. So before we start, I've just got a few housekeeping arrangements to mention. Uh, can we request that mobile telephones and other such equipment are switched to silent uh, so as to not disturb the conduct of the meeting? Uh, there's no fire test plan for today. If there is an emergency evacuation, please take instruction from the council staff present. The assembly point emergency exit is just behind us here. Uh, the toilet facilities are situated outside, down the main corridor near where you come in through the main entrance. Uh, the meeting today is open to the public and will be streamed live for subsequent broadcast via the council's website. You should be aware that the council is a data controller under the Data Protection Act. Data collected during the webcast will be retained in accordance with the Council's published policy. By entering the meeting room, you are consenting to be filmed and to possibly use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting. Uh, one final thing to mention, we do have hearing loops available, so if you would like one, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, so, uh, can I now ask uh, members to introduce themselves, starting with me? There you go. I'm Alison Norris. I'm a new councillor for Woodhouse. Um, I'm also a midwife and I was working in Doncaster today, which is why I was a bit late coming from there. But I'm also really pleased to be here at my very first LAC meeting as a councillor and glad that you all could come. Good evening. I'm councillor Tony Downing, councillor for Mosborough Ward. Hello, Anne Woolhouse, councillor for Baton. Sorry I'm late. Didn't allow enough tra traffic. Traffic, sorry. Hi, I'm Jane Falls. I'm the South East Local Area Committee Manager. Uh, Sarah Hyde, Democratic Services. Good evening, I'm Councillor Gail Smith and I'm a Liberal Democrat councillor for Mosborough. Good evening, I'm Glynis Chapman. I'm a Liberal Democrat councillor for Mosborough. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Curtis Crossland, one of the Lib Dem councillors for Baton. Hello, I'm, I'm Councillor Ian Horner, I'm the new Liberal Democrat councillor for Baton. Thank you very much everyone. So before we proceed with the agenda, uh, I'd just like to explain how the meeting will work. The agenda has changed slightly to include two extra updates. So firstly, we'll be dealing with the formal business and apologies, declarations of interest and minutes of the last meeting. And then we'll have an item where you'll find out more about the members of this local area committee. Uh, we'll then move on to public questions and answers. Uh, and then the two extra updates are pro projects identified in the community plan 22-23 and feedback and presentation on the volunteer day. Then we'll pause for the, uh, in the webcast and we'll hold discussion sessions breaking out into groups to give you an opportunity to review the South East local priorities. We really want to hear from you about what you think is important in the South East so that we can prioritise things going forward. Finally, uh, we'll resume the meeting to hear back feedback from those group discussions. So I'm now going to go on to apologies for absence, Sarah. Uh, I've just got one apology from Councillor Denise Fox. Thank you. Are there any exclusions of the public and press? I understand there's no items that require exclusion of the public and press at this meeting. Okay. Item 4, declarations of interest. Do any members wish to declare an interest in any of the items on, their business, on, the, of business on this agenda? Thank you. Item 5, minutes of the previous meeting. So I'm going to ask members to approve as a correct record the minutes of the meeting held on the 23rd of February 2023. You've all seen those. Is everybody happy with the minutes? Yeah. So, oh, February in here. Sorry, my notes are February. Sorry. <laughs> um, let me just check the second one then. Is it the uh, 17th of May? Yeah. Okay. 
So, uh, on the 17th of May, everybody agree that they're an accurate record? Thank you. So, item six, then, is meet the councillors. So, this is just an opportunity for me to introduce our three... Introduce our three new uh, councillors, which is Ian Horner for Bayton, as you've already heard, um, Alison Norris for Wooderhouse, and Glynis Chapman for Mosborough. So welcome to the meeting. All councillors will be available at the end of the meeting. If you do want to have a chat on a one-to-one -one basis, they'll all be hanging around, and please do come and talk to us. Tell us what you, if you've got any issues, etc., and we'll see if we can help. Um, now, on to item seven, quickly, because this is what we all come for. Um, so, there's public questions and petitions. We've received two questions in advance. Um, and for those in advance, I will have, uh, invite the questioners to address the committee with their questions in turn. I know one person's not here, um, but one is. So, is, oh, I think is, is Jill Green here? No? Jill? She was coming in through the live stream. I'll just check. What I'll do is I'll move on to the other question and then we can see if she's around. Or is she there? She is. Okay. I don't have to turn around. Okay. It just feels rude really talking to somebody that I can't see. Um, Jill, I just wanted to ask, do you want me to, because you, your email is very detailed, which is great. Um, do you want me to just read the question out or do you want to give some context? Uh, no, you can read the question out, that's fine. Um, and it, I've bolded it in, uh, in bold text at the bottom of my email because the first half of, my, well, a large part of my email was kind of um, feedback on the last session where I was cut off um, from the Zoom meeting uh, before I'd had a chance to respond to Amy's response to my initial question. Uh, and also, I've done some research on uh, vehicle uh, littering from vehicles um, on the highways since the last meeting. Um, and I've had a response from Andrew Kemp, who is the CEO of Littercam. Um, and he tells me that the idea of um, installing litter cams in Sheffield has been um, explored by the council uh, in the past, uh, as recent as um, recently as last year, I think, um, or the year before. Uh, yeah, August 2022. And Joe Otten, Councillor Joe Otten, um, who was chair of the Waste and Street Scene Policy Committee at that time. Uh, said that he didn't think it would be cost effective. So my follow-on question is, um, why was it deemed to be not cost effective? Um, and, you know, what areas were they thinking of trialling it in? Um, you know, if, if they didn't think there was enough littering in a certain area, then why don't we try installing it in... Um, on the A57, for instance, where both sides of that dual carriageway are absolutely covered in litter. And I, I, um, I fully appreciate it doesn't look as bad at this time of year because all the grass and the hedgerows have grown. Um, but, you know, and it's covered by vegetation. But there are still people throwing tin cans and takeaway food wrappers and you name it, um, fly tipping even, uh, and carrier bikes out of vehicles on the highways. And at the last meeting, I was um, told by Amy that um, I should volunteer to be um, a litter picker and uh, that they only picked up litter twice a year from the side of highways and that it, it was a waste of time anyway because it just gets re-littered. Um, and Gail Smith, Councillor Gail Smith said, well, I think she thought that I was trying to say it's a vehicle, littering from vehicles is a, quite a different issue to pedestrian littering, um, which the volunteer litter pickers tend to tackle. Um, 
So I'd like to know, um, would it be possible for the local authority to look at trialling it, uh, trialling litter cameras, or at the very least putting some signs up um, on the arterial roads out to the south east, such as the A57, um, to, um, to warn people that they'll be fined. Thanks, Jill. That's, that's really helpful and gives some background. So your question that you actually put in was, please could the South East Light devote some of its resources towards asking the Waste and Street Scene Policy Committee to reconsider trialling the use of litter cameras on our most littered highways and on what basis and in which area of Sheffield was it considered to not be cost effective? We will take that forward with officers. We will get you a full response. Um, and We've got now um, what you've said, the additional questions, so we will get a response to those as well on the research you've done. So thank you so much for putting that forward. Uh, just for your information, it's still Joe Otten that's the chair of the Waste and Street Scene Policy Committee, but we can raise it with him mm. as well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could I just say one, one or two words? Uh, first of all, I find it rather irresponsible that somebody should advocate that a volunteer should be walking around in the middle of a very busy road uh, trying to pick litter up unsupervised. I don't think that is a very, very foolish advice. Now, my... Uh, well, that's what she said. I know. I don't that's know. What she Until said. we watched it back, I don't know if that's... So. I don't know whether she did the... She was told that by Amy, but that's what the, I know, I know, yeah. the lady said. Uh, Amy, do have responsibility for picking litter up in this city. Unfortunately, they're not very good at it. And it's about time somebody held their feet to the fire over their performance in this city, over a whole variety of different services that they're supposed to provide. Now, I have asked uh, that the... Um, committee that Joe Orton uh, chairs actually has a session on what exactly each like area is entitled to in terms of service from uh, AMI so that if they're not doing what they're supposed to do you've got proof uh, that what they're supposed to have done and if they're not doing it then we can have them here to explain why they're not doing it and I also, I've also asked that that's, that hopefully will be put on a website, preferably the like website, so that people can see what the entitlement is through a very expensive contract that Amy had got with the council that, in my view, they are not fulfilling properly. Um, I also, last weekend, found myself, for the first time probably ever, not able to give people any advice about flooding because... In Woodhouse, generally speaking, the flooding that takes place is around two streams, one which floods into a road and the other which floods into some fields. So, mm -hmm. But last weekend, um, I had people ringing me up saying it was flooding their houses, which I've never had before. So I've also asked that on, um, on, our, on the like websites, that advice is put up if anybody should find themselves in that unenviable position of the house being flooded that there is some advice as to what there is to do because I didn't know I was, I was just sort of uh, flailing around thinking of people I could email or whatever thank you chair thanks Nick uh, yes Ian technology um, <coughs> yes this is a serious issue I've been out for the last four or five weeks with the hack and talk litter pickers um, and just if I could do a plug right now, um, 10 o'clock on Saturday morning here in the car park, that each month, first Saturday, is, is the Baton litter pickers. So I was out with them last month. Um, and, well, you'd never cease to be amazed at what people took away and what mess they make. And I entirely agree. I think we, it, the people throwing litter from cars is a big problem. I also think that when people cut grass, they need to check if there's any litter in it before they cut it. Because that's one of the problems. The grass gets cut and the litter gets thrown all over the place. Um, so we, we need to look at, we need to look, take this seriously. And I do take it seriously. And I say I've been out with the litter pickers and, and great praise to the people who do it. Yeah. 
Thank you. I hope you appreciate Jill opening up all these questions. So we've got Tony Downing and then Gail that wants to come in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry, again, a little plug for the Westfield Winter Pickers. They're out every Saturday. Uh, but I do take cognizance of what's been said that um, Amy are responsible for the cleaning of this city. People give up their valuable time to help and do it freely and it's time that we held Amy to account and that's what our intention is to do, to hold the, hold, hold the contract to account to make sure that what they do, they're fulfilling their contractual, um, uh, fulfilling their contracts. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Chair, thank you. I think a lot of what Mike Mix said is very important and I think one thing that we can do as a LAC is invite Amy to come here and, uh, and talk to us and allow us to ask questions because I want to change the subject a little bit about grass. There's a lot of areas of footpaths in Waterthorpe where I live that you can hardly walk down them because the trees and the bushes have not been cut for a long time. I would love what Mick said to have a, a piece of paper that tells me when it should be done and then I can uh, jump in and, and sort it out. So I think you've, had, you, you've brought, uh, opened a can of worms, Mick, but thank you because I think it's something that we should do and we need to bring the people here to answer, I know it is, to answer the questions that we can't answer, so thank you. I'm sorry, I, I only have one request. Please don't ask Gillian Fair, brother, further. Ask somebody further up the chain, because she always gets it in the neck. She does her best, but she's only... Uh... Okay, so I've got a gentleman, I've got a lady here that wants to ask questions. Is that it? Okay. It's, it's, it's Ken from our Thought Litter Pickers. I've been picking rubbish for 20 years. And I would just like to say this. Do we still have community payback sentences issued by the magistrates? Do we still have that? Because at one time we did. People's antisocial behaviour sentences and they paid back in the community by picking up rubbish and doing other things. Are those sentences still given out? The probation service deal with that, yeah. But the, then people are still around, yeah. They are? Yeah. Well, I think they should be made to pick up the rubbish from the hedgerows, green spaces, woodland in South East Sheffield because some areas are very, very bad. And it's, it's not just because it's good to have clean communities, which it is, but they're safer communities. If you get clean neighbourhoods, they're safer. People want to live here and not leave them. So I would think... We should be more direct about it, and if we could get these people serving sentences in the community, they start picking up rubbish from the green spaces, and I can tell you, some of them are just a trash can. So that is what I'm suggesting. Thank you. Just for a bit of information, I've done litter picks myself, and I have had the probation service out with us, so I'll take it from here that I will write to them and invite them out into the southeast to help with our litter picking groups. So I will do that as chair of this committee. And there's this lady here. Thank you. I'm just putting myself in the firing line. I am here from Amy um, in place of Gillian today. So I can't answer any specifics because I don't cover this area, but I'm here for, for Gillian to pick up anything. I think okay. as we've heard from me, we, no, no, no. no offence to you, but I think we want some day, we want higher management here because, you know, Gillian's done a great job at dealing with us, but I think... She's one person trying to cover the whole area, and it's not fair on her or you. Yeah, thank you. Um, just moving on, I've, the second question, I've got six questions within it. So, um, promote, uh, pro it's from Dave Cronshaw, and I'm going to, it's got various questions from uh, employing two more community wardens, asking about ward pots, film money, about burglaries and fair. Um, about the lack budget and about plastic recycling and bigger blue bins. So there's a lot there, a lot of different topics. So I'm going to get a written response, which will be attached to the minutes and everybody will be able to see that, but I will get a written response to every point that is raised on there and you'll all be able to see those as well. Okay. So that's... Switch myself off. That's the um, public questions over with. Um, 
Yeah, is there anybody else that wants to ask anything from the floor before we move on? I know you ask it, and you're absolutely spot on to ask it. Um, and it's something that's asked across all seven lakhs. Um, so with our themes that we had, and I'll, obviously I'll bring you up to speed with that, we're looking at what we can use as a benchmark or a performance indicator to see whether what we're actually doing is making any difference. It's no excuse, but we're only sort of 18 months in, and a lot of this, I'm not saying the services were new, but we new to us, but you're absolutely, if you have any ideas, and I know you've, you've said some of that before, <laughs> that we can take on board, honestly, it would be great, but we have definitely, and going forward, in the, when we've revisited the plan and refreshed it, that's something that we definitely need to have in, and we need to be able to demonstrate. I'll explain a little bit more about the, um, the highway side of stuff, um, obviously when I give you a bit of an update, but yeah. Sorry, it was just saying we want, re we want assurance instead of reassurance. And in each meeting we keep getting reassurance that this is happening, but we actually want assurance um, so we can see it is happening. Thank you. Any more questions before we move on? No. Oh, sorry. So, I was just interested, just about the, you know, the burglaries and thefts that you, um, that one of the questions, was that for which area was it for? Because I know that just from our community, there is a, a massive concern at the minute just around um, the burglaries and thefts that are happening. I just wondered if there's any opportunity for us to get any of the local neighbourhood policing team or something at one of these, to one of these meetings. Is that something that's possible? This. Sorry, yeah, um, they should be here tonight. Um, they were invited and I was informed that they would be here. I'm presuming if they're not, they've had some sort of urgent call because they normally do come to every meeting. Um, so I'm not, they're not here, are they? Samantha's not here, no. But we will, we can pick that up. Just to let you know what the question was, I can read it out. In previous months, can you confirm what the crime figures were per ward in the southeast area relating to burglaries, car theft and other categories, and how does that compare to other areas in, the, in Sheffield? So we'll get that information. It will be published uh, on, in the minutes. Yes, Ian? Yeah, um, in one of my community visits, I was advised by a police officer that there are, in fact, only six police officers in, in, in Moss Way Police Station. If you think about that, um, their ability to respond to things is very limited because if they arrest somebody, that ties up two, that ties up two officers plus the custody sergeant, etc. So one of the issues really is, it, it's well and good to say the police don't respond, but I wonder how six people are meant to respond. Thank you. Yes, Alison? Um, just to say, I spoke to Inspector Watkinson as part of my own induction in getting to know things, and they are working really hard to evidence need to get more officers from September. Um, and also, I know there are problems with reporting, both with the length of time you're on the phone and sometimes with getting a password for the online reporting portal. But if you can stick with it and get registered on the online portal, all the reports we get, and it doesn't matter if the same people, you know, if different people report the same thing, or you report something that was nearly a crime but not quite, just all those incidents, if the more we can report them, the more we register on the overall South Yorkshire system as needing extra officers, and it really helps them argue that we can get extra people. 
Tony? Yeah, I've recently been uh, part of the Police and Crime Panel, which, uh, which sits in Barnsley, and uh, we had a briefing from the Police and Crime Commissioner to say that new officers are being recruited, but unfortunately now it's like everything else, like nurses as well, they have to go through a certain a degree uh, before they can be uh, made police officers. So it takes three years from recruitment to actually getting them onto the streets. And so, so that's another issue that you should think about when you're thinking about we need more police on the streets. We do, it's important, and, uh, and I said that, that's, that's where we are with, with, with that one. Thanks, Jeff. Gail? Yeah, I think it's important to reiterate that, you, you know, I look at Facebook uh, community groups and community, people in the community say, oh, Joe Bloggs had this done and that's happened. And I'm always very tempted to say, did you report it to the police? Because a lot of times people are saying what's happening, but it's not getting reported. So incidents can become big incidents if they're not reported and if the police don't know about them we can't criticise them can we really thanks Nick thank you chair I, I mean uh, Gail's right about the recording because that's how the number of uh, recorded incidents in a particular area is how resources are allocated and I hear what Tony's saying about the recruitment process is still uh, taking place but I think there's a different argument has to be had with those who allocate resources to different parts of this city because this particular district has got some of the most crime uh, concentrations of criminal activity across the piece. It's got Woodthorpe, Wyburn, um, various other parts of the city that have got high crime rates. So that for me, the debate should be right now until we wait. We can't all wait until these new policemen turn up. We should be asking, having a debate about the allocation of the existing resources and whether or not this part of the city is getting a fair amount or at least a reasonable amount proportionate to the need and demand that there is. And that's the one, that's the debate that has to be had now. Thank you. I've got a question online, but just before we finish, I've just been reminded the, the South East Light did send out, uh, did put online and on Facebook how to report uh, crime. Um, the links were on there and they've sent out, it out to all community groups across the South East. So there has been something gone out but we will redo it and do it all again. So that just gives everybody the information about how to report a crime and all the various ways you can do it. But we'll get that out. I'm now going to ask if uh, it's Jane, if, it, Jane, if she wants to come and ask a question. Hi, Aria. Yeah, it's just with regards to um, the reporting of crimes. Um, I'm admin on a local community group. I'm also the neighbourhood watch coordinator for S12. And I do every, nearly every single time I see a post on Facebook, I say, please, can you report it? I give them the online reporting portal um, because that literally takes seconds compared to waiting on the phone. Um, but there is a general... Um, apathy and uh, but you know it was only my car that they didn't they didn't get anything so I'll not bother and I think we need to you know get that message out there that absolutely everything needs reporting and something that I do say quite a lot to people is if you feel it's important enough to put it on Facebook or social media then it's important enough to report it to the police thanks Jane um, okay, if that's all the public questions, oh, yep, yeah. just bear with us while we get the microphone here. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay, um, yeah, uh, the problem I have is having some land in North East Derbyshire, but living in Mosborough. Now, I often see litter or motorbikes or disruptive behaviour coming from South Yorkshire. And I wondered, how is this information shared? Because I do report crime, but very often to North East Derbyshire. And I think it's vital 
that these two police areas, policing areas, liaise very closely. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, just going from experience of trying to deal with speeding across two and, and trying to, the, there is a definite boundary line where that's not us kind of um, feeling. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure how much they do talk, but we can ask that question. We have got the contacts there, so we could ask them the question about how do they share that information. Come back to you, Jane, on that. Okay, thanks. I can turn myself off. Any more? We'll move on to... Okay, thank you. So uh, over to Jane now for updates on projects identified in the Community Plan 22-23. Just wait for Alan. So just while um, we're getting it loaded up onto the system, um, it's, we just wanted to give you an update on where we are with the projects that have come out of the consultation that we've undertaken over the last, well, about 18 months ago um, on the themes that were important to the communities in the South East and as a result of that, the um, projects that were identified. For those of you that have been to a few of the meetings, you'll know that we did um, a detailed spend report in January and then I gave an update in March I will bring a completed spend report to the next meeting because all of the projects then um, will have been charged as such and I just thought it was easy to do that and also um, speak to you about what will happen with the 23-24 um, budget once we've completed this round of consultation. So this is talking about the um, community plan for 22-23. And it'll just give you an update on the projects, as I said, that we developed. And the themes, if you weren't aware, we had three key themes that came out. Transport on highways, environmental and crime and community safety, they were the three key elements. And then I just wanted to update you a little bit on um, issues around youth provision budget that we received and also a flight, flight tipping budget as well. Okay. Okay, so um, under the Transport and Highways project, that was by way the highest um, theme that came out, and it was predominantly around um, speeding vehicles and inconsiderate parking and poor parking or lack of parking. So um, as a local area committee and with the local community groups, we looked at what potentially we could do, working with obviously colleagues from different services, both internal and external, and with different community groups um, and members. And the key thing that we looked at was how we could actually um, make a difference and influence speed reduction. So to do that, and it comes back to the point that you, you made earlier about how we can measure if what we've done has made any difference, we, as a LAC, haven't got thousands of pounds worth of money. We had £100,000 that we allocated to all of the priorities. Um, so what we looked at, and with consultation with yourself, was how we could gather that data um, to be able to go to the relevant services and say, look, this is a real issue in the South East. We know it is because you've told us, but here's the evidence to back it up. So some of the things that we actually purchased for the South East um, was the um, speed gun. So we worked with our colleagues um, from Moss Way and we purchased a speed gun um, that is used solely within the southeast area. And they gave us a commitment that they would use that um, weekly, obviously dependent on other um, issues that, they, that would come to the forefront. And they've given me some information and they'll give us some more in, um, complete information. But they have been out on numerous occasions with the gun. You will probably have seen it if you're on Facebook pages, because the minute that the police go out with a gun, they get heavily slated for haven't they got anything better to do. But actually, it's in response to what a lot of the community groups were saying to us, because they're fed up with vehicle speeding. So they, they have been out. They, um, from the recent round of what they've done with the speed gun, they, I think it was 
just over um, 1,500 vehicles that they had actually spotted, obviously with the gun, um, that they'd picked up. And of those, they've actually issued, I think it was around about 90 uh, warning letters. The issue with that is, when they go out, it's the PCSOs that go out, and the PCSOs then have to send that information through to the relevant service within the council to issue the letter. They're not able to actually issue fines. What the police did give us a commitment was that it was trying, if they could, release the police officers on occasions to go out and do that. They would do that because they can actually do the fining. Which comes back to what I was saying earlier about gathering that data and information to be able to say to them, look, it's a real issue on X road between three and four. You really need to get your resources out there because it will make, um, you know, it should, make, it should make a difference. They've also been out with a speed fan as well. So they've been out on some of that on Moss Way and on some of the different um, main arterial routes within the area with that speed uh, van. Sorry, it's just gone off. Technology, eh? Okay. So one of the other things that was really key um, that you asked us to do was undertake a speed um, survey for all four wards. So we started in the Mosborough ward and then we rolled that out across the other three wards and we did an online consultation and we did some focus groups so that it allowed you the opportunity to tell us what it was that was an issue for you within the area that you lived. So within the Mosborough ward we got um, just short of 300 responses back and I don't think it told us um, anything that wasn't particularly, we weren't particularly aware of, but what it did do then was allow us to go and concentrate with the speed strip surveys to back up that data and that evidence and give us the information about when the actual speeding was taking place. And to be fair, I think it also um, did a bit of myth busting as well. So when people thought that people were speeding all day every day, actually the information and data showed us that it wasn't, so it gave us the times and the dates. And those speed strip surveys will be undertaken um, across all of the other three wards as well. We also purchased a vehicle activation sign, so that's like a smiley face, or it will flash up and tell you if you're doing the incorrect speed. We purchased one for each ward. That allows us, again, to give us accurate data about the speed that vehicles are going and the time that that's happening. They rotate around the ward, so from that, within each ward, we'll have six locations, and that vehicle activation sign moves around every six to eight weeks. So to come back again to your point, we're now just at the end of the first tranche of all the six sites. Um, since they were first went into place, the other thing that we've done as well is, you may, you may have seen the repeater signs that have come up. So there are the big signs that say what speed you should be doing. And I know, again, we've received some negative comments, but what we're trying to establish is if we're actually highlighting to people what they, speed they should be doing, it's just a visual sign, again, that a reminder of what they should be doing. I suppose it's playing on people's conscience. There will always be the people that will speed. And to be fair, um, other than take serious action within the local area committee, we're limited to what we can do with that. But I suppose it's educating where we can and raising that profile. We've also purchased another four vehicle activation signs, just so that they're constantly as a reminder and they're flashing up. To be fair, I'm not saying that I speed, but if I drive and I see it, it's a reminder to me that actually, you know, make sure that I am going the correct speed. And I think one or two of the members have said the same. I just wanted to say, Chair, that we've got one on Moss Way, and it's been there three or four weeks, and it's, you still can't see the sign, because it was put in behind all the trees. So I don't think it, you know, for, the, for it to... Yeah. So I, I have sent an email three times, and Scott has as well, saying, we've got this sign, but it can't be seen. So can we ask and plead that when they do move them round, that there aren't any trees stopping it to be seen? Otherwise, yeah. it's a waste of time. 
it's a very good point. Obviously, when we identified the, the sites, um, it was at a time when the trees and the vegetation hadn't grown, but yeah, it's a really good point. We have raised that. Do you want to come back, Scott? Okay. Um, the other thing that we've done as well and that we've been asking for um, is the police are very keen if there are any community groups or residents that would like to get involved in the community speed watch scheme. That's something that they were really keen to develop. Local members have been out with the, with the gun. Um, so if there is any of that, we've, I think we've had one area where we've had some um, feedback and obviously residents have been keen to do that. We thought there'd be a lot more actually, but that there hasn't been. So if there is anything or there's anything stopping you, then please let us, let us know. So that's what the biggest bulk within the transport and highways um, theme um, was spent on. We've also undertaken to, look, to take a look at parking. That was the good and bad parking scheme. And we've had, we normally have the local schools here that, that have undertaken the scheme where we give them certificates. Um, we've engaged with six of the local primary schools. We've stopped now until the schools go back in September. Then we'll be revisiting that and refreshing that. That goes down exceptionally well. We accept it's a short-term measure because the parents tend to um, take note of it for a couple of weeks or perhaps not as long as that. So we're also working in certain areas to try and establish it, what other further things that we can do with that. But it went down exceptionally well, the, the good bad parking scheme. The kids love it. They love to go out and ticket their parents, especially if they've done bad parking. Um, the next one is, is just some, and you'll see them from around the room. There's just pictures of the projects that are there. Okay. The next thing that we had was um, the environmental projects, and again, that came out very highly from the consultation that we've done, and that addressed um, a number of issues, really. The key thing was that, we, that we've got some very passionate um, people and community groups across the South East that felt within the area we should be doing more to protect the environment. So one of the things that came out of that and that we looked at was to develop a, an environmental project group. So we've been working over the last um, eight months to develop that. We now have a core group. And on that environmental champions group, we also have lead people from the different parts of that. So, for example, on there we have the environmental champions for active travel, which is James Walker. We have the rewilding champion, which is James Rhodes. Um, the community gardens is Rosemary Rabjohn. The S20 Green Corridor we don't have anybody for that at the minute, so if anybody is interested in being a champion for that, just let us know. Community Orchards is Adrian Burke, and Litter Picking is Sue Smells. And that group meets um, every quarter, and the aim is that those champions will feed back in there. I thought the internal service is you, you did. That's my apologies, you did. Thank you, Claire. Claire and Sandra said that they are now the S20 champions. Thank you. Okay. Um, also within that theme, one of the key things that came up was around addressing dog fouling. Um, and I think, obviously, members with their caseload get loads and loads of complaints um, about how we can tackle that and we can um, sort of deal with that. So we looked at a campaign for addressing dog fouling. You will see, um, again, we have got um, posters. Anybody that's just been in Freshville Park will see. There is a huge poster um, with a boxer dog that's on it um, that actually is, I suppose, again, it's pricking people's conscience to say, you know, pick up after your dog, please. It's not nice. Be a responsible pet owner. We've also trialled in a couple of the parks the dog dispensers to see whether that makes any difference. Again, to come back to your point, we're only two or three months into that, um, so we wanted to be a bit longer because that was only gone in, but that is something. I'm really not sure how we evidence that. I think that we're more around the complaints or the amount of times the bin gets 
um, emptied, but so there's something along those lines there. We are also working with colleagues within uh, parks, woodlands and countryside about an educational project working in the Shirebrook Valley with the local junior schools. So that will take off this year. Again, it's gone up, sorry. What's your, what's your password again? I know. <laughs> it is. Um, we've also, um, the group decided to allocate some funding for the um, local groups around fruit tree pruning. So I think some have already been on it, but parks, colleagues in parks will be delivering that training throughout the year. There is um, some amount have been allocated to, um, we've got some orchards within the southeast area. So the Baton Orchard has been identified as one where we would pick that up. And we also funded litter pitting. I'll say it, litter picking equipment for the groups that are working throughout the South East. We also identified and worked on a sponsor of a street initiative. There's some leaflets at the back. That's where if you want to um, adopt your street as such, it's nothing um, too onerous. It just means you are a, a, a good neighbour as such. You keep an eye what's in your street. If you want to pick up any of the um, leaves or debris, we can arrange for that to be picked up and report any repairs, etc., that need doing. We purchased um, a wellness totem pole, and I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with the one that we've got in the Freshville Park area. It has a QR code that you, if you've got a smartphone, you can scan the QR code, and it will give you, um, in the Freshville Park, a 10-minute talk about wellness and health and well-being. The one that we will have in the S20 corridor will give you information about environmental awareness. And we are also within the South East. There are local environmental projects that the Environmental Champions Group that I mentioned earlier have been allocated some money to come up with ideas and projects that they would like to develop within their area. Okay? Thank you. Not an IT is coming. Okay. So there were some of the projects. Crime and community safety projects. So that was our third theme. And it's interesting, I suppose, and it comes back again to your point. I'm sorry to highlight again. <laughs> but you've um, one or two people have said either through um, the webcast or from in here that about reporting crime. And it was something that was raised at one of the meetings we had, I think it was actually in Berlin, when we had the separate work sessions and we had the different um, groups there. And we actually came up with a crime and community safety leaflet which showed you how to report the crime, either online or to which relevant service it needed to be, whether it was um, obviously colleagues in housing, whether it was um, obviously the police, whether it was the 101 number, etc. As Karen mentioned earlier, we will reissue that because um, I think, as people have said, it seems as if it's people aren't, they're not doing it or they're not perhaps aware of how to do it, so we will get that sent back out. We also work with colleagues in police about crime safety leaflet. So I, I, mean, I noted that um, a lady over there said about um, outbreaks of crime in certain areas. We work with a police from Moss Way and we um, developed a leaflet which to, to go out to the areas where it's currently um, crime is obviously uh, very high, just to remind people what they should and they shouldn't be doing. Um, so we will go back again and make sure that they are going out to the relevant areas. This seems really odd that we fitted this into the crime and community safety project. The reason that the increase in mother and toddler groups came into that was um, because of people's perceived fear of crime and their fear of going out, and it linked into social isolation, groups were saying to us that since um, the post-pandemic and COVID had hit, a lot of the community groups that had been around had folded or uh, were struggling to get back up. So we were approached by Woodhouse um, Forum 
around, um, they'd been working with um, young mother and toddler groups to try and increase the number of mother and toddler groups within the South East. Post-pandemic, we'd got eight mother and toddler groups across the South East. So um, Woodhouse Forum wanted to work with the um, child services within the council to up that number. And they gave us um, a commitment that they would try and increase that number by three per ward. They've given us information and feedback to say that they've now increased that number by 20. So there's, each ward has got a number, um, five per ward, where the mother and toddler groups have been increased. Okay. We also, in there as well, and again it never really seemed to sit right in there and it sort of came out by default. The reason that I'm saying this to you is when we go into the breakout sessions next, obviously after this, is just to think about what it is that's important to you and within your community. People again were saying to us it was their perceived fear of crime and the fact that with gangs of youths that were hanging around the street corners and the fact that there were large groups of um, youths hanging, they couldn't necessarily, not necessarily doing anything. Obviously in some of, um, circumstances they were, they were causing antisocial behaviour, but in others they weren't, they were just finding a place to gather. And um, what we did, um, obviously what members were saying to us, the youth provision in the South East area is, was exceptionally low. There was hardly anything at all. I think there was um, one provision through the youth services, which was in um, the Mosborough ward, and then there were some small-scale schemes that were voluntary run in some of the others. So um, the lack of work that worked hard with um, Sheffield Futures and with the voluntary groups and with Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday. I'm looking at Scott now for the... Um, Sheffield City Trust and again the local community groups to put on youth provision. So I'll explain a little bit further when I show you further down about what we did with some of the groups. But we, um, as a committee, decided to fund within um, each ward, there will be holiday camps within each ward going on through the six weeks holiday to try and tackle that. But we do know and recognise, and what's been fed back obviously from the LAC committee is that it's something that's really, really important. We have the youth cabinet that we work with um, who come to the meetings and um, members have met with them. And that's one of the things, again, that they've fed back through to us, that within the South East, um, being able to have somewhere to go or some activity to undertake is something that's really important to them and it's very difficult to always find it within the South East. And then lastly, what we looked at and we funded was a mobile CCTV camera. So that was to tackle the ASB issues that were happening in and around the area. So we funded one as a LAC. It's currently in the base green area because there's issues that's happening in and around that area um, that we're working with, obviously, local members, youth services, um, and the other services within their parks, Amy, etc., housing, colleagues in housing, um, and the community safety team. That mobile CCTV is owned by the South East Lack, and that will move around. It links to the city centre system, so we're able, if we need to, the police need that data, um, they'll get that data and it will go, and it will go back. No, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to turn around to get back on it. Okay. Right, that's just back on the road. Right, I'll not go through the pictures because you'll see that most of those pictures that are on there um, are, are up on the boards. Um, I'm just conscious that there might be questions and obviously the other things. I just wanted to say and again, it's for you to bear in mind, we, didn't, we weren't able to reach or tackle everything that came out of the community plan. So it may be something that you possibly want to revisit when you're thinking about when we go into the groups for discussion. Community transport um, was raised 
and that was accessibility across the area. Active travel was raised, it's something that you wanted to explore. Um, transport networks, again, which are supposed linked with the community transport. And then education and information around recycling and additional bins was something that came out. So there's an, op there's an opportunity to revisit um, priorities, again, with the local communities. We're starting that now. We're starting that here. We've got on online consultation that's taking place currently, and we're hoping to do some small-scale focus groups in and around the area. We've undertaken a number of community events. We've had the Orchard Day. We've had the Volunteers Day, which Claire's going to talk to you about. There's the Community Litter Picks. We funded and supported the Jubilee events and the Coronation events. There was the Lantern Festival tree planting events and we've done a number of days of action in and around the wards uh, with different services and with local members. Um, and I just wanted to, um, I have talked about it but I never gave you the, the examples. So as a like, each like received um, £57,000 for target hardening measures for fly tipping. So the areas that were in, identified within the southeast area and which will receive the target hardening measures are Stone Lane, Victoria Road, Burley Vale Close, Valleyfield Drive, um, New Street, which is where the Long Acre site is, and Junction Road slash Station Road. Um, what we know currently is for those sites, it's not it hasn't totaled the full 57k. So if there are any other areas that you can think of that are repeatedly areas that get fly tipping, then if you want to let your local, uh, obviously councillors know, let us know, and we'll feed that in and see what we can do about that. But the work is starting on those areas um, imminently. Each of the LACs also received £10,000 as well on youth provision, a further £10,000, um, and that was for community groups to bid for to put on youth provision. So within the South East, we had Studio 54, which received funding, and that was to deliver youth provision from the Crystal Peaks Church. We had Friends of High Fives that received funding, Fresh Youth, Charnock Bike Track, A Mind Apart, and Sparview Community Church. So that's just some of the projects, and it was to give you a flavour. Like I said, we will bring, I will bring a complete spend update, which will show you exactly what's been spent. Um, but that was the whole of the 100K, which has virtually been allocated for 22-23. What the members did agree was that any underspend um, that's sort of like left, that it would go to support any community um, events, festivals that's been put on through the summer period, or through the period. So if there is anything out there, uh, we've had a couple of requests. There is. It's not a huge amount of money. It's um, up to £250 um, that we could go towards. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Thanks, Jane. Any questions about that before we move on? Because I'm conscious of time and we need to move into the discussions group so that you can all have your say. But... Go on then, Mick. Be brief. It's about the idea of uh, the fruit trees. Uh, how do you how is that working? Because I was just thinking in, in our part of the world we've got a number of empty uh, allotments that people don't want. So rather than sit there doing absolutely nothing, maybe a few trees on there. I don't know. So we can, we can take it forward to the environmental group and see how we can take that forward. See if there's anybody interested. Thank you, Mick. If you can, if you can feed through to Jane where, them group, where they are, the plots. I think so you, think, you know. Yeah. Alright, okay. okay. Thanks. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, feedback and a presentation by Claire on the volunteer day. Before we do that, I just want to say my personal thanks. It was a fantastic event. I think everybody that took part in that um, agree. You did a really good job. Well done. Um, so I'll let Claire talk about it and how it came about. That was some build-up. So my name's Claire. I am a LAC officer for the South East. 
And I'm just very quickly wanting to give you a little update on something that came about after the last public LAC meeting. Um, if any of you were there, you'll remember that we did have a session on volunteer groups and community groups. We invited lots of members of the volunteer community and lots of different community groups. And uh, we had a bit of a session where we had a talk about what sort of problems they've been facing. And one of the things that mainly came out from that was that since the pandemic, and since so many groups had, had, uh, had their spell of having to close, that a lot of groups had folded or were really struggling to get new members or new volunteers to join in. So one of the things we thought we would be able to do to help was to run a, an awareness event for volunteer groups to get out there and meet the public and let people know what opportunities there were in South East Sheffield. So as a result, I made links with Crystal Peak Shopping Centre and we managed to hold an event in the central atrium, right in the middle, where everyone walked through, where we could have all the different volunteer groups and community groups to have little stalls out there and get members of the public around so they could see what there was available for them. So this was the flyer that went out. It went out all across social media and also put out in community areas such as libraries and everything. I have a, a contact group of most of the community groups that we work with within the South East. And I emailed them all and got them all to join in and they all booked tables on the event. And we held it on a very, very hot fr uh, Friday the 16th. I don't know if you remember it. It was melting in that atrium. But everyone took it in really good spirits. Everybody turned up. We had a lot of people that took a lot of interest. And there's a few photos of the day. Unfortunately, not when it got incredibly busy because I was too busy to take photos, but there is some photos of, of what we had going on there. So like I said, the event went incredibly well. Everyone that signed up to take a table turned up on the day and everybody who gave me feedback said that they managed to get several new members to either their groups or new volunteers or certainly managed to raise awareness of what sort of groups were, were in the area. Um, there is a lot of enthusiasm for this to happen again and, and hopefully it will be something we can bring forward again to, to help out. Like I say, it's, it, was, it was something that went really well and we really enjoyed it. So, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to say, I'll get a bit nearer, just to say that uh, Voluntary Action Sheffield and SciFab, the Funding Advice Bureau are there, so if any of you are involved in voluntary groups or know people who are, I would just really put a plug in for the support and training and advice they give because they can, they can really point you in the right direction and those two groups work together very closely. So things like accounting, fundraising, legal responsibilities for managing volunteers, they can really give you back up with that. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to now pause the webcasting so we can go into groups and have discussions. Uh, so if you can just bear with us a few minutes, uh, we're going to split you into three groups and just move the chairs around basically so everybody's facing and we'll just get your thoughts on what you think the uh, priorities are for the South East. Thank you.